Okay, let's get back to this. Um, basically, took half a day off, and I'm back now. Uh, got in some new toys today. Got in a new airbrush. It's uh, the brand new Pache Pache Talon. Uh, I played with it a little bit today. This is a really nice brush. Uh, it goes from anywhere from about uh, seventy dollars all the way up to. $140 depending on the kit you buy with it. It's got all kind of different adjustments to help even the novice paint better, you know, for lines and stuff. Uh, super large uh, paint cup, hold a lot of paint. Uh, if they could design it better, it'd be nice to be able to uh, have different paint cups you could put on it. The only thing that I've seen really bad about it that um, I would like to see change is it's a lot bigger than all my other airbrushes. It's a little bit heavier. But with what it does, uh, I can deal with that. But anyway, we're getting close to getting these finished. We've uh, gone through and painted them. We put our glitter on. We got our throat on. What we got left to do is basically put uh, a gill plate and dots. You can either paint your dots on. With the airbrush, once you get it good, uh, this new talon, it really makes it nice because you can adjust it down for just a little bit of spray. Uh, I was playing with it earlier and did one on this one, and they come out real nice. One on both sides, so I might paint those. I also did another one to put like a half dot on it. And basically what I do with that is I'll take a piece of tape and uh, put on the, uh, the lure. And then I'll spray my dot coming off the tape. That'll give me that effect, and then I can go ahead and paint my gill plates but let's get the dots on and some of them we're going to do with the tape so let me go off camera just a minute and I'll be back and I'll have them taped up and show you how it works okay um, I like to use the scotch 3M the blue tape I know it's a little bit more expensive but it actually really works uh, well for these types of applications if uh, I get up and have to go somewhere, I can still come back two or three days later. And if this tape was on there, it's not going to pull other paint off the lure. It just works real well. So what we're going to do, instead of using the brush on the dots, like I've done in the past on plastic baits, we're actually going to use the airbrush. And this new airbrush, you know, I'm real confident with it because of the way it sprays. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of the black uh, color coat 2 paint. We're not going to need a lot. If you can see my little backboard I use over by the my vent. You can see that I've been practicing on dots and everything else with it. Lines and then just doing all kind of stuff. But... I mean, you can do, this This works really well. So we've got our paint in there. And on the back of this brush, you can actually dial this down, press it, and you can't even pull it back. So you can really set your brush to do exactly what you want. So as I adjust this here, I can adjust my spray pattern. And you can see now I'm just getting a little bit of paint and I let it build up. But I want more than that, so I'll just open it up a little bit more. This is a really nice feature that a lot of my other brushes don't have, so we're getting into a more expensive brush. And like I said, you can buy these. Um, and actually, I think it's a Talon 2, but uh, the kit I bought, it's got three different tips to it. Plus, it's got a fan spray, which is really nice. So we can sit here and do, you know, I can do it down and come back, and now we can just do real small lines. Darken them up. You can write with it. It is, I mean, it works really nice. So we'll use this for the dots. Now what I do is I put the tape on kind of at an angle. On this particular shad body, it's actually got a gill plate, so it basically gives me a line to go ahead and do this that would be, you know, um, with what the fish would look like and where it would be on their body. So what I'm going to do is I've got my paint here, 
the tape so I can spray on that and not get on the bait. But I take it and I come off and then I just keep coming back and making the circle to the size I want. And then I get that effect. You don't have to make big, big dots, but that's what you come out with when you pull the tape off. I mean, you use the tape on and on again, but what I did is I just went ahead and put tape on those that I'm going to do this half dot on just so we can get it done. So, do those real quick. Start on the tape, come back off to get the size circle I want, pull the tape off, and move on to the next one. I think as long as I've been painting, two things that I always like on a bait that other people I don't see them using as much is I like a dot somewhere on it. I like gill plates, which is red. You know, some type of red up by the head, near the eye. And then I also like uh, to put the floats on it, you know, like the oranges and stuff. There's one we missed earlier. I mean, once you get more comfortable with your airbrush, you'll just kind of go in there and knock them out and not even look, really worry about it or or try that hard at it. This talon's really neat in the way that I've got this down and fully depressed because that's where the air setting is on it, so that's all that's going to come out. I can come out here and I can control that. Now we've got a different type of bait. Where do we want to put the dot? I mean, we can put it up here at the head, but we're going to be do, kind of get that all really um, just too much and it gets too busy. So what I like to do on a bait like this, especially if it's long or like a big shad bait where I don't want that dot up there, I'll come more towards the back of the bait and start putting it in that area. Kind of like that. And then all you do is take it and look at it, bring your brush over to the other side, and you're there in that area, and then just spray it again. I think if you make a dot too big on a bait, it really takes away from it. Uh, I've never seen where small, you know, is going to make it go wrong. Okay, those are all done. Those are all done. Now, this is a little bit different because we still got a bluegill pattern. So what I want to do is I want to keep that dot more towards the front on the upper half of it. So that's, I mean, that's about the area I'd put it on here. And then once again, this is a, it's not the bluegill, so I'm going to put it more towards the back. Now remember too, again, once we get all these done and, and, we, and we dip them in the uh, clear saw from Lure Works, they're going to shine just like they had an epoxy coat on them or a, a, a urethane coat on them. 
So I'm not going to clean the brush right away. Got this really neat new uh, paint stand that holds like some holds six different airbrushes on it. Now we're going to use a brush to do our gills. Uh, we're going to use the um, Blood Red, the 5803 Colour Coat 2O. Uh, there's little pallets you can buy, plastic pallets put in that. I mean, I just put a little bit on top of a, a cup. And when it dries, I can just come back, flip the cup over, and use it if I want to be that way. For this application, I go out and I buy brushes that have a real, real fine tip on them. Now we're going to put our eye up towards the front, but I'm going to bring this this basically a little gill plate. I'm going to put it kind of close to the dot, but I'm also going to keep it to separate the body from the head. So that's where I want that separation. Same thing, just kind of look where you put it on the other side and put it on there. It's that simple. If you have all your other paint pretty much dry and you mess this up where you don't like it, you can actually go ahead and take uh, a little bit of water and wipe that off and all the other paint should stay on. Uh, it's going to be an awesome. This is totally weedless. It's got a weight in it. Your hook hides up in here. So you can run this through grass and trees and stuff. I'm going to catch some good fish on that one. Now you'll kind of notice too, this is the same chartreuse we sprayed on the other baits. But once again, if it's a pearl body underneath I'm spraying on versus a, um, a solid white body, you really get a big difference on it, a change in colors. Like this was a pearl, and this was a, a white, and you can really see the difference um, between the chartreuse on those. we got our scale pattern and everything on them. So I'll go ahead and finish up these and then I'll be back to you and I'll show you how to put on the eyes and uh, you know Lou Works has got a good eye so I'll be back in a minute. I got all the gill plates on, uh, I don't know if you can see them. The next step we're going to do is we're going to apply the eyes. Um, Lua Works, um, Vision of Spike, it, they actually make their own eyes. Uh, I know a lot of you out there have already tried to put eyes on plastic baits with super glue, who knows what type of adhesive. And the majority of the time out, you either get, uh, with the 3D eyes on the market today, uh, certain colors might bleed, or they, they pop off when you catch fish. Lureworks actually came up with these eyes, and I mean, they've got any color, any size you want. Uh, depending on what you want, I'm sure they could run a, uh, a custom color for you if, if the quantity was enough. But the thing about these eyes that's different from the other eyes on the market, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this eye is made out of the same material as a soft plastic bait. I don't know if you can see this, but I just folded that eye in half. So this is actually a material that's the same that's on the bait. So they've got their product called fix -A -Lure, and it's, it's basically a plastic glue um, and, you know, I think eye color is about as important as anything else on a bait, what you're doing. Anything that I do um, in a bluegill, a bass, uh, some of the perch, uh, where there's green involved or chartreuse involved, I like to use a gold eye. Um, if I'm doing like a fire tiger, I might use a red eye. I could still use, you know, a silver eye or something else. But for the purpose of this, what an eye does to the bait, you've got a, you know, a good look at this bait now. We've got the dot, the gill plate, and everything else. It's looking pretty good. The lat lines. We've actually got some uh, contrast so that when you turn it in the light, we have um, both the uh, purple and blue that shows up. Just put a little dot in each one of them. Make sure you get your caps back on these because uh, it will dry out if you leave it off pretty quick. But now we just take this eye and because we're using a plastic eye and plastic glue, when we put that on there, it's basically, you know, glued in there. And it's not going to come off. It's, it's, 
it's bonding those two plastics together. Now that really changes that bait. The other side of that is when we dip it, now what we've done is not only use this plastic glue on the bottom of it, but we've taken a hot plastisol, which is what clearisol is, it's just a, a lighter, thinner version for dipping. And when we do that, now we've actually taken that outer layer and it's melted to the eye. So now that eye is really bonded in there and we're not going to have to worry about um, that coming off when we're out fishing because eyes are, I don't know, I think a dot's real important in the eye second. Put an eye on a lot of my baits and you know do a lot of custom spinner baits and stuff and I think it's a big thing. I'll go ahead and put the rest of the eyes on and then we'll come back and I'll heat up the pot and then we'll go into dipping and I'll hold one up that we've done like this and then one will dip it and once that's cooled off I will show you the difference of how this bait looks. I'll try to get my wife to take some pictures. She's a professional photographer and you know really get the light right and see if we can get the glitters and stuff to come out to show you what we started with is a white plastic bait and what it can become. So let me get these done and uh, we'll be back in a little bit.